The four-wheel drive scene in our country is thankfully heating up. 4x4 trucks come and go, but one company has literally ruled the segment and has now taken the niche category mainstream, Mahindra's Thar. The only real competition it has is a no-nonsense off-roader from India's largest van maker, the Force Gurkha. The Thar vs Gurkha debate, you have seen it all. Reviews by experts, paper wars fought over specifications, and of course, the internet's favorite tug of war videos. But this video will be different. In typical Trippuccino style, we will understand the technical differences between these two and why they are mechanically different. The factory fitted snorkel and manual diff locks all have been covered in many other reviews and videos, so we will drop those. Watch this video till the end and I guarantee you will be seeing details never seen before anywhere on the internet. So the question many of you have been asking me, why did I buy the Gurkha and why not the Thar? This is not a one better than the other kind of video. As always, I will lay down the facts before you and you decide which suits your build better. Let's start with the obvious. Of course, the Gurkha is taller and bigger. In profile, it's also longer. The size of the Gurkha gives it cabin capacity and the layout means that the volume is flexible for different kinds of uses. You can build it out into a family tourer or into a rugged overlander. There's lots of space for your imagination. The Thar on the other end is a more compact cabin and restricts both luggage and imagination beyond a two-seater. This liberation of space and the resulting flexibility is a design feature of the platform on which these are built and cannot be changed aftermarket easily. So you can do anything but within the space available. And that's a big draw for what I had in mind for my 4x4. Given the larger size of the Gurkha, what is interesting is its footprint. The bigger Gurkha surprisingly runs on narrower tracks and shorter wheelbase, which makes it have a smaller footprint overall. This makes it great over narrow trails and cliff sides where even a small difference can separate a go or no go situation. This also results in a tighter turning radius, which makes the Gurkha negotiate tighter tracks off road and better even on city roads. On flip side, tall truck running on narrow tracks has stability and corner handling issues and that advantage clearly goes to the Thar. We are talking shape and sizes. The old gen Gurkha had impressive approach departure and ramp over angles. That goes for both the extreme and the explorer. The BS6 Gurkha had to get a longer front overhang to meet new pedestrian and safety norms which have robbed it of these angles in stock form. The Thar has very good approach and departure thanks to its basic Jeep lines, which is a box with the wheels on all four corners. But it also has the better ramp over angle despite having a longer wheelbase thanks to its higher ground clearance. The stock Thar beats the stock Gurkha in off-road geometry. Why do I say stock? Because the Gurkha platform lends itself well to a lot of aftermarket improvements like I've been doing. You may like to check out those individual videos, I'll link in the description. But aftermarket ready-made options are abundant for the popular Thar. Who would have thought a niche off-road Jeep will sell 1 lakh copies? So the aftermarket fabricators also prefer making things for the Thar rather than the niche Gurkha selling only in the thousands. But that's exactly the premise behind the Gurkha. It's more of a built not bought school of thought and requires an involved owner not afraid to get hands dirty. It's not a fill it, shut it, forget it truck and owners who expect fuss free ownership are bound to get disappointed. Neither the company force nor the product is ready for a full peace of mind experience yet. Sad and unfortunate but true. But if you're ready to put in the work and tinker around a bit, you can build out the Gurkha to an extremely capable version of what you exactly want.
Let's X-ray the underbody. Both the Gurkha and the Thar have independent front suspension and rigid beam axle with multi-link suspension at the back. But the way the Gurkha's IFS has been set up makes it ride like a dream for ladder frame standards on road and off road in a variety of terrain. The steering, especially the new improved version, makes the Gurkha an extremely easy to drive and fatigue free long distance tourer with that super light clutch as a bonus. The Thar rides bumpy on road and requires aftermarket suspension to have a decent ride quality. But the Thar has its own advantage off road. Every generation of Thar has had good articulation and wheel travel makes the Thar have it all its wheels on the ground most of the time. The Gurkha on the other hand often has one or more of its wheels airborne and violently rolls to one side to negotiate obstacles. This has been the case even over older generations well except the Gurkha Extreme which had a solid front axle. Underbody layout of the Thar is more compact, organized and neatly tucked in. While the Gurkhas looks busy, hanging here and there and almost commercial. The Gurkhas underbody is however spacious and easy to get under and work a little bit of DIY on individual components without having to bolt out a bit of things on the way. The parts of the Gurkha seem to be heavy and solid and built to take abuse while the Thar has gone for more engineering towards weight saving. Compare the lower control arms of both and you'll know what I mean. One looks like folded sheet metal and the other is, looks like solid cast iron. This total heavy weight does bog down the Gurkha and the Thar has the clear power to weight ratio advantage. But no one tells us how and why their mechanicals are different. Let's start with the Gurkha's FM 2.6 common rail. This is a Mercedes derived engine, the good old OM 616. It's been called a dinosaur of engines and has been around for decades. Force has it across the board as its staple, even right up to its latest premium Urbania. This is mated to the Mercedes derived old workhorse G28 five speed gearbox. This combo is old, but it works. It's simple and gets the job done. But in my personal opinion, this combination is unfair to the BS6 Gurkha. It deserves the 2.2 litre engine and the G32 gearbox combination, which we saw in the extreme. That would have been a fitting kit for this purpose built off roader. Sadly, we have to deal with what's on offer. So the 2.6 and G28 it is. And that's what we will discuss in this video. We will pit it against the Thar's 2.2 M-Huck for equivalence. We will not involve the petrol M-Stallion. The M-Huck is mated to the 6R 320M 6-speed manual gearbox. I just love the M-Huck and how versatile Mahindra has tuned it in its different products. It's a superb engine. But how are these two powertrains different? You will not find that answer anywhere on the internet. So here is a Trippuccino's exclusive, the engine performance curves of both these compared for the first time. The M-Hawk makes its peak power at 3750 RPM, putting out 130 horses, while the Gurkha's 2.6 puts a lower peak of 91 BHP, but a little earlier at 3200 RPM. It is sad that they didn't even bother to give us the traveler tune of 115 bhp on this Gurkha. Bad move force. Anyway, the M-Hawk and 2.6 both have torquey motors with flat torque curves. But the Gurkha hits its peak torque earlier at 1400 rpm itself. While the M-Hawk takes its time till 1600 rpm to put out a decent 300 newton meters of torque and holds its flat over a wider rpm bandwidth as well. Hitting peak at 1400 RPM so early is a very impressive thing for the Gurkha, which makes it a very strong low end puller. Within their respective flat torque bands, you will see that the power delivery is nice and linear and makes both these engines strong torquey motors. But on the right side of the graph, the Gurkha has 
virtually no top end that's the region where the thar clearly shines stronger it gets better run at speeds on highways and the wider torque band also means that the thar will have better in gear acceleration and overtakes better on the highways while at these speeds the gurkha will run out of breath in summary make no mistake the mhawk is clearly the more powerful engine because simply at every rpm it makes more power and torque than the 2.6 but the engine is just one part of the puzzle if the engine was directly connected to the wheels that would be the entire end of the story your engine spins at 1500 rpm your wheels spin at 1500 rpm great right wrong well you wouldn't even be able to roll out of standstill think about it and that's why we need a gearbox let's break open both these gearboxes the gurkha's g28 has five gears whose diameters are in this ratio which we call the gearing ratio and the thar has six gears we'll now see the gear ratio spread which is simply the largest gear divided by the smallest gear this gives us an idea of the bandwidth within which the gears are distributed the gurkha has a wide 5.83 bandwidth while the thar crams its six gears in a narrower 5.53 bandwidth what this means that the gurkha's ratios are wider and relaxed spread than the thar let's see how each gear looks in comparison now the lower gears are of a larger diameter and help in torque multiplication and pulling while the higher gears are ideal for speed and easy cruising we can immediately see how wide the lower gears including the reverse gear are in the gurkha compared to the thar the thar has a smaller fifth and sixth gear for highway speeds additionally now what are these gearing ratios and diameters and physically what do they mean well if the first gear has a 3.96 is to 1 ratio in thar it means that whatever torque the engine supplies the gearbox will multiply 3.963 times when the vehicle is in first gear so the gurkha's wider first and second gears are going to help it with the torque and pull better while the thar's narrow fifth and sixth are going to help it with speeds and highway cruising now that we have seen the gearboxes the story does not even end here if you have watched my four wheel drive simply explained video which i recommend you definitely watch it i have explained why you need a differential on the axle this introduces another set of gears which multiply the torque again by the number which we call axle ratio which is 4.3 for the thar and 4.363 for the gurkha the combined effect of all these gears is what is called the final drive ratio which means the torque which is supplied by the engine of the gurkha gets multiplied about 20 times by the time it reaches the wheel the thar does it 17 times this is the reason for the tractor like pull in first gear of the gurkha strong low end torque so if the engine makes 100 newton meters then the wheel gets 2000 newton meters 20 times torque multiplication wait let's breathe for a moment 20 times 17 times torque multiplication this is not the reason for the gurkha's victory in famous tug of war videos watch this video till the end and we have a bonus segment to explain just that this also means that if the engine's crankshaft is spinning at 2000 rpm then the wheel axle will only spill 100 rpm a 20 times rotation speed reduction in top gear you want the opposite you want a smaller torque multiplication and more speed instead so the overdrive gears which have ratios less than 1 in decimals they are slotted into in respective top gears the thar has a final drive ratio of 3.08 which is better because we want a lower number and more speed while gurkha does 3.52 so thar is going to hit higher speeds on highways easier and cruise with lesser strain on the engine and return a better mileage because of these smaller overdrive gears the gurkha climbs up on the speedo slow and steady and settles down comfortably at around 90 to 100 kmph its large displacement 2.6 liter engine can hold the speed 
and cruise all day like a freight train effortlessly but the story is not finished even now because these are four wheel drive trucks and they have transfer cases which again have a set of gears inside one for high range and one for low range if we slot into four high the transfer case ratio is 1 is to 1 so we get no torque multiplication additionally but we merely clutch in the front differential and the transfer case splits torque to front diffs where it is identically multiplied by the front differential ratio which is same as the rear differential in four wheel drive low is when you get the beast mode the transfer case multiplies the torque by another 2.018 times before the split so the final drive ratio in this case when you're using all extreme gears like first gear on the manual box and four wheel four wheel drive low in the transfer case will result in the maximum possible final drive ratio which is called the crawl ratio which is a whopping 41 times torque multiplication so the 100 newton meter your engine put out comes out as a massive 4100 newton meter at the wheel and that will pull through anything on your path in four wheel drive low remember your axle now spins only one time for every 40 rpm of the engine so you're going to get that much control while applying this torque through your slow moving wheels and hence this is called a crawl ratio The Thar similarly has a slightly better crawl ratio of 42.26 which makes both these trucks beasts when four low is engaged. If your jaw dropped at 42 times multiple, look at this monster at 100 is to 1 crawl ratio. The Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Its 4.88 is to 1 axle ratio helps it to get to the 100 is to 1 crawl ratio. But what is this? Why does it say that this helps in torque needed for larger aftermarket tires well all gears in the drive train are a game of relative diameters and hence mechanical advantage the gearbox has a set of gears the transfer case has a set of gears and the differentials have a set of gears each at different dia but the wheel is the final piece of the puzzle which converts this rotating axle speed into forward motion of the vehicle So its diameter is the final gear in the puzzle. So if you go for a larger diameter wheel than stock, you will get larger circumference and would end up covering longer distance in the same time. So speed is going to increase. But we already said if speed goes up, your torque is going to be shaved off. I've derived a small formula ready made for kilometer per hour speedo conversion and the tire diameter relation in inches. So if you upsize the torque shaved off is going to cause some so- compromises to your vehicle it will lead to lesser acceleration of the line you lose some low end grunt you lose pulling power and overtaking and passing in highways so that's going to get difficult how severe are these compromises and effects depends on how much you have upsized over stock diameter rearrange this relation and you will see that the tire dia directly is affected by the final drive ratio if others are kept constant which means if you upsize then to maintain the same efficiency of the drive train you need to adjust your final drive ratio the new final drive ratio if you want to maintain the same efficiency has to be the stock final drive ratio in upsized tire dia divided by the stock tire dia the part in the final drive ratio which is easily swapped out is the differential that's why you will see many modifiers changing their differential gears into larger sets for compensating this torque loss remember with large rims your actual speed is also going to be higher for example if you run 35 inch wheels in place of stock 30 inch diameter then the speedo shows 90 km per hr but your actual speed is 105 km per hr So if you are upsizing and if you are upsizing extremely remember to recalibrate your odo speedo and then calculate your mileage everything accordingly because what you see is not what is there in reality if we upsize our wheels just for aesthetics without understanding these mechanics and these compromises we would just end up wondering why the vehicle is struggling suddenly or mileage is low or the bearings are suddenly busted out of the blue so as i always say every modification has an implication 
and it is wise to consider the side effects before committing to a particular mod. It's always a trade-off and you choose wisely after understanding what is going to be the effect on the whole of the vehicle. Comparing the evolution of both these vehicles over different generations, today's Thar has evolved leaps and bounds incorporating many electronics and interior upgrades. The Gurkha of today compared to the first gen Gurkha has only been merely updated to meet minimum statutory requirements. It still largely remains true to its original mechanical simplicity of manual gear operated four wheel drive, manual cable operated differential locks, a factory fitted snorkel and even for meeting BSX norms it uses a fuss free relatively simpler option of lean knock strap instead of DEF. Finally, both the trucks are great options and have their own strengths and weaknesses. But for me personally, I feel that the Thar is a matured and well-engineered product in its life cycle. The company has made it the best version of itself already. So if you want a stock car right off the factory to do everything you ask of it, the Thar is the best bet. There's no doubt. The Gurkha on the other hand is a blank slate. Simple mechanicals, flexible platform and a lot of potential for improvement by the involved owner. Simply put, I did not buy the Thar for what it is. I rather bought the Gurkha for what it can become. Subscribe to this channel to see what I make out of my Gurkha. Time for the bonus segment about the internet's favorite tug of war. It's become an eye-catching theatrical used across the board by everyone from our average Rajesh to Elon Musk, pitting all sorts of vehicles against each other, burning rubber and busting clutch plates, proving nothing in a pointless show of nothing but mechanical apathy. Let's break down the physics behind this. Each vehicle has to make enough force to overcome the opposing vehicle. This force depends only on two things. The friction of the opponent with the ground and most importantly, the weight of the opponent. If the weights of both these cars are equal, then weight distribution over front and rear axles will come into play. If that's also same, then traction. What type of tires are they using? How much traction are the tires offering? And what kind of terrain are the vehicles standing on? All those things will come into flows. If both cars are evenly matched on all these fronts, only then will the manner in which the force is being applied will come into play. For example, a higher tow hitch will tend to tug the opponent upwards, reducing the weight on his rear axles, thus gaining some advantage. If one car pulls on the center line and the other pulls on the side, the angle of the force changes, giving slight, only slight advantage to the center puller. But that's not the deciding factor. The fundamental thumb rule, if both cars are on standing on similar terrain and everything else is same, is that the car which has more weight on the driven wheels will always win. There are enough controlled experiments on the internet like this half-scale Cybertruck from Hacksmith Industries showing that a smaller car, even with a more powerful engine, won't win against a heavier pickup. But the same small car, when made heavier by adding more weight, will eventually win. Tug of war is not a scientific test to prove which vehicle is better or which engine is more powerful. Of course, the engine and the gear train and how the power is put to the ground is important, but it is not the deciding factor of who the winner of a silly tug of war is going to be. For example, if the Thar is tied to a heavy rock and tries to win a tug of war, frying up its powerful hammock, but the boulder doesn't budge. Boulder doesn't even have an engine. So what is the M-Hawk losing to? Sheer weight. Now, if we put an engine into the rock, any engine, and we call the rock a Gurkha, the Thar will still not be able to move it, regardless of what engine the Gurkha has, because of sheer weight advantage. The next example is the case where weight distribution of front and rear comes into play. 
pick up trucks are the worst possible contenders you could drive into a tug of war battle against a jeep because by design pickups have a factory rake and have a front biased weight distribution even if you switch to four wheel drive the torque split to the back is not going to bite traction into the wheels because the bed is empty there's no weight on the rear axle final word of advice is don't try tug of war with your own car it's like bungee jumping with spondylitis you can sweetly kiss your drive train goodbye after that but if you are a risk addict and your car is an organ donor then please go right ahead but don't forget to load up the flatbed of that isuzu before you go against a heavier guka that would be a fun video to watch thanks for your time bye bye